What's going on everybody and welcome back to Exploring Attractions. My name is Scott and you're watching your stop for all things theme park and attraction related. If you guys are new here, consider subscribing down below with those bell notifications on and make sure you're checking out our social media for the latest and greatest theme park news at Exploring Attractions on both Instagram and on Twitter. What's up guys? I hope you guys have all had a great week and I hope you all are excited for tomorrow. And what's tomorrow you might ask? Well, tomorrow is April 22nd and that's the re-debut of both World of Color and Main Street Electrical Parade at both Disneyland and Disney's California Adventure. So yes, exciting times indeed, but there's a couple things that you should know before watching World of Color, not specific Main Street Electrical Parade. Also, I should note that cast members recently got a preview and Disney put out a preview of the Main Street Electrical Parade float. So spoiler warning right now, I'm gonna put up some photos on the screen from that. It looks really pretty. I can't wait to see it in person next week and I can't wait for all of you to experience for those who are going tomorrow. But like I said, there's a couple things that you should know before wanting to watch World of Color, and that's the use of virtual queue. Now, we never thought that that would come back, right? Virtual queue, you know, it's long gone from Rise of the Resistance and Web Slingers. Obviously, they didn't really need it. It was useful, but they didn't really need it, right? Well, they're bringing it back for World of Color. This will be the first time, at least at Disneyland, that a virtual queue system is used for some form of entertainment. And now before the park closure, when FastPass still existed, they would hand out FastPass at the different machines for World of Color and for Fantasmic, which I do think, side note, that I think that they'll use the virtual queue system for Fantasmic as well when that returns later in May, but they did use just free a, a free FastPass system, and the virtual queue is free too, but it's a little bit different of a system. So I'm gonna give you like a quick, a quick guide on how to get yourself a virtual queue to experience World of Color. Now keep in mind, you do not need this virtual boarding, let's just say, let's just say a virtual queue time slot to enjoy the World of Color. You can watch it from different areas across Pixar Pier. However, you're not gonna get the best viewing option. Now the best viewing option would be to get one of these queues. Because with FastPass, they had roped off different colored areas that gave you a complete view of the Pixar Pier and where the World of Color is at. And that's essentially what they're doing with this. So let me explain how you're gonna do it. So beginning at noon, you have to be inside the park. You go on your app, you click on the virtual queue section, and if there are spots available, you just click join virtual queue and you'll be able to join whichever showtime you prefer. Well, I shouldn't say prefer because it is first come first serve. So if all the, let's say eight o'clock showtimes are gone, then, well, then they'll automatically put you in the virtual queue for the 10 o'clock show times. I don't know if those are the exact show times. I'm just using it as an example. So in other words, you can't necessarily choose which one you want to do, nor can you choose which colored area you want to stand or sit in because there are two different colored areas and one's a little bit better than the other. So like I said, it is just first come first serve. You have to be on the app. You have to be ready to go with your phone to click join virtual queue and make sure that all your tickets are linked to the account. That's probably one of the most important things about these different queues is you have to make sure all of the tickets and passes are linked to your account or else there will be issues and you won't be able to have your full party to join you in watching the world of color because you have to have one for each member of your party. Now, quick tips and tricks. I recommend that you find somewhere where it's not super crowded and there's good cell coverage. So constantly be checking your phone prior to noon when they open up and see which area has the best cell coverage. Do not connect to park Wi-Fi. Everybody is on park Wi-Fi. It slows you down and it's gonna lessen your chances of getting a spot for world of color. So I tell you right now, do not connect to park Wi-Fi because none of the times that I've used park Wi-Fi for uh, Rise of the Resistance boarding groups and I was able to get early boarding groups for all of them. So one of my best tips and tricks is that and also, like I said, stay away from big crowds of people because everybody's gonna be on their phones trying to get these different cues. With Rise of the Resistance, I always found this one specific place and now I can talk about it in Frontierland where there's not a lot of people. We had the same bench and everything. That's how we we're able to get low boarding group times. Well, it's gonna be the same situation for World of Color. So just find somewhere quiet with also good cell coverage and do not connect to park Wi-Fi. If you do a couple of those things, or if you do all those things, then that increases your chances to get yourself a spot in one of the reserved show seatings for the World of Color over at California Adventure. And I don't think that it matters what park you're in as far as getting those cues. I think you can be in Disneyland and still get it, but to be safe until, until we have more uh, proof, I guess, that you can do it in different parks, I'd say best bet is to hang out in DCA first around noontime. But that's just my 
quick video in regard to World of Color and the whole new system that they're using. It's not really new. We've seen it used before, like I said, with Web Slingers, with Rise of the Resistance. You know, Disney park goers are used to this, at least frequent park goers like myself. And if you know the tips and tricks already, then good for you because you'll have higher chances at getting the reserved show seating. But if you're not, that's why I'm here to help. And that's why I'm here to uh, give you guys the best tips and tricks, at least. I don't think the demand will be as high as attractions are. I think you should have no problem getting a, a reserved spot. But like I said, the first couple weeks or so, it is going to be a little bit more popular since nobody's seen it for a while. So I recommend you follow these tips and tricks. But anyways, everybody, if you guys have any thoughts or any tips and tricks that I didn't mention down below and you want to share them with us, so make sure to leave it down below in the comments section. And if you have any questions in regard to Virtual Queue or World of Color for that matter, just let me know down in the comments section. I'll try my best to answer it as soon as possible. Anyways, everybody, my name is Scott and you've been watching Exploring Attractions. Positivity is key and most importantly remember to keep exploring peace out everybody